welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. I'm Patricia Duart. I'm Darlene Hayes. And I'm Connie Wright. And uh, you know, we're friends and members of the Hopkinton Facebook page. Uh, and started about a year ago, and it has just grown. Well, you founded it. Yeah. And you founded it on the principle of how we can connect and help each other. Well, indeed. Actually, I started it to experiment with Facebook and to just get a few of my immediate neighbors talking about things that mattered in the, in the really local community. And it took off. It's, t you know, it was like a dozen people or something. And then Way yeah. back when. Now it's networking and everything that's come out of this. Well, it's, it's taken on a life of its own. And, you know, what's great is I don't know most of the people. On the page. Oh, I know. Uh, next I know. <laughs> A few, and it's been fun. Yeah. It's been a blast, and I mean, I mean, the nickname of it is the Real Housewives of Hoffington. It was all done ton in cheek when Patricia came up with it, but it was really these mostly are all very professional women, and it's been a blast getting to know people. Exactly. Well, you know, essentially, it's a, it's an open group and uh, female heads of households, primarily in Hopkinton, but who are you know connected with Hopkinton, have friends in Hopkinton uh, for local news and information. But to your point, it really has grown and there's a broadly diverse women oh, yeah. from all kinds of backgrounds and interests and uh, just a lot of stuff that goes on on the page you know well it's been fun for me because um, Darlene and I got to know each other I had one of the uh, organizations that I sit on the board had their big gala um, was it two years ago had to be two years yeah, ago. Yeah, two years ago. So it was and, right when you started this. And, and I had some available seats, and I said, who wants to come join me at my table? And Darlene raised her hand, and you know, all we had was the Facebook page. Yeah, <laughs> Coming I mean, out. We, we met for the first time when I showed up at our house to get in her car, and <laughs> I knew about the charity and the Center for Enterprise for Women and have been involved in some smaller aspects of it. And I'm like, no, I want to go. <laughs> and stuff. And it was a great time. It was and blast. I've actually met a couple friends from that one night that I've stayed connected with. Yeah, and exactly. then just recently, was what, three or four weeks ago, oh. there was another one that was through the same charity. They did like a woman's networking night with wine and stuff out in Worcester. Mm -hmm. And a young resident in Hopkinton who became one of the Real Housewives on the Facebook page, Joelle, joined me. She has now met Connie, and she's actually started networking with the whole thing. It's been it's amazing. Been well, there, you know, there are so many um, women entrepreneurs, business owners, executives, and housewives, and moms, and, and folks involved with the schools, folks involved in a variety of things locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've had um, opportunities where uh, individuals have you know, had a chance to promote their business. Right, right. Um, Which is a good thing, sharing yeah. information. Oh, I mean, we don't have you know, any hardcore sales pitching. It's really yeah. people passionate about what they're doing, um, what they're involved in, and I love it. And it's almost become almost a trustworthy Angie's list for us, too. Yes. I mean, yes. because I'm going to trust you or Connie or one oh, of my yeah. neighbors <laughs> over going to Angie's list or the Better Business Bureau because I know you guys, and there's well, people serving. So people are finding electricians, they're finding babysitters, babysitters. babysitters. You know, I got a dental Snow referral removal. a week ago and yeah. stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, it's been, right. you know, out there. I mean, I know that people have done even almost like mini focus groups. Uh, Kathy, yes. Kathy Boudet has been doing one on restaurants, what people like of restaurants in the area, what they want, you know, what would be successful. Not that we are out to build a restaurant, any of us, but right. don't have any control. Who what do we to want? In? What do we but, need? But, but, what? but what's been successful in stuff like that? And my God, that thread took off, and there must absolutely. have been a hundred input on that. Well, absolutely. You know, I've personally benefited. Um, tomorrow, I'm doing that that talk. Um, it, it's actually. I'm doing a, a, a talk in April, and tomorrow I'm just asking for stories um, about women. We don't tend to raise our hand. We don't mm -hmm. tend to take risk, and this is all um, the multifaceted issue around us not achieving high leadership levels in corporations, politics, um, professorships, and universities. So how do we solve that problem ourselves? And a group of women are going to meet me tomorrow mm -hmm. just to talk about that. And I'm excited. And it was Absolutely. kind of neat because it was a posting she did on there. And then you look at the diverse group of women that are actually showing up at Waterfresh oh. Farm to do this. And it's like, you know, whether there's, there's a couple stay-at-home moms to sea level of people to oh. past politicians in town, all having input. Right. And sometimes we don't even realize, like, 
the influence of the network among the women and how powerful we are and stuff. And as a support group, I mean, I'm walking into this building at HCAM and seeing half the businesses here are owned by women. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. We rock. Absolutely. We do rock. Yeah. Yeah. But by way of introduction, let's tell, share with the group, the audience, who we are and what you do in your day job. And you know, how is it that we're able to be here this morning? <laughs> you start. Because, you know, I, I gotta decide what I want to tell people. I'm just like, I could spill up the whole half hour. Oh, God. Well, that'd be fun. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. We'll, we'll do a whole show on that. No. Well, real, real briefly, we'll just keep it pretty high level. So, you know, Patricia Duarte, and I've been a resident of Hopkinton for now 17 years. I can't even believe it. <gasps> We had yes. two kids who were both went through the Hopkinton schools, Kira and and Evan, uh, and um, so yeah, we we live on Saddle Hill Road, neighbors with Connie, and met Darlene through the Facebook page. Um, um, in terms of my my day job, I have a business, a uh, management consultancy, Decision Insight, and I'm specialized in organizational development, transition management, and executive search. So I'm passionate about the world of work and and, and working in a variety of areas, serving the for-profit, non-profit uh, arena. So and we've yeah. worked together, and we, we've worked together, yeah. and uh, Patricia and I, uh, you know, moved. Well, I'll segue. Yeah. Um, yeah. Moved to town 16 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I, I East Coaster by birth, but uh, Deloitte and Touche moved me here to head up the service line for them. And we met both as neighbors and then as professional colleagues and have been fast friends yeah. uh, really since, since I since first started. In. <laughs> and my kids grow up here. I have three children. Uh, family last name is Stolt. Um, and who are the three kids now? Oh, oh, Connor, <laughs> Emerson, and Cameron. Um, all redheads. Yeah. But uh, now empty nester. They're all uh, kind of fledged and launched, one out of college and, and two still in college. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, And I... Uh, it's really exciting, and this is sort of a tease because it's going to be announced real soon. But I'm joining another woman, and we are launching uh, a new women's professional consulting firm, oh, uh, strategic awesome. financial uh, uh, consulting and accounting and finance, IPO, m and prep. But I sit on three boards, mm -hmm. Center for Women in Enterprise, which is how you and I met. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, I am uh, on the Boston YWCA Board of Directors, and then I'm on the Mass Growth Capital Corp, which is a quasi-state agency mm -hmm. that um, provides funds to local businesses um, to help them keep the business in town, keep jobs in town, or in state, and, and support that. And then I do a leadership and mentoring program out at Stanford University. So yeah, she's, she's a very, a she's a very yeah. proud Absolutely. alumni. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I was proud of my Stanford. Well, actually, I just ran into you at last week at Waterfresh, and you were interviewing potential students there. Yes, yes I had, yeah, yeah, applicants, that applicants, which fun. is so cool. Yeah, well, like, yeah, let stuff. me just give a plug for a couple of boards that I said, because I would hate yes, to not mention. Um, so similarly, I'm on the advisory council for the National Society of Hispanic MBA a Boston affiliate. Um, in town, I sit on the personnel committee um, oh, with, that's right. with um, some wonderful uh, committed folks who are doing some uh, good leadership development and support uh, for, for town management. Um, and uh, I'm on the advisory committee for Tech Sandbox, which is a wonderful startup uh, technology. Barb Finer here in town. Yeah, Barb Finer, who we'll, we'll have to get her on the show and share a little bit about what's going on there as well. So, um, yeah, so yeah. volunteer work, all good. Yeah. Well, I'm Darlene Hayes again, and I'm probably as close to a townie as, uh, on, at least yeah. sitting here on these couches. <laughs> I've been here for almost 19 years, and before that, I grew up in Ashland. So I've not gone very far. Oh, and my far, I, I, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I, know. I, I was here before 495 came in. <laughs> and EMC, but um, I, I actually am probably, I'm the only one with kids still in the school system. I have a son who's a junior in high school, Andrew, and a daughter who's in eighth grade, Melissa, who actually gets mentored by Connie. Connie's actually taking Melissa under her wing and really, like, helping her build self-esteem and things like that oh. um, and it's been wonderful um, the relationship they've built and um, for work She's great what I adorable. For, yeah. for work what I do um, I actually work for a professional tennis team I work for the Boston Lobsters I'm actually their chief development officer and general manager which is part of um, Billie Jean King's world team tennis league so um, it's awesome too. It, it's, it's actually pretty unique and um, 
So none of us compete for work among each other. <laughs> right, but, right. Um, I mean, I'm actually leaving this weekend because we're doing our player draft at Indian Wells. And I don't know if you guys know Barbara Burke. Yeah, she's a yes. huge tennis fan. And like, we're having lunch out there. She's like, oh. And she's like, oh, I'm going to be here. I'm like, oh, well, I'm sitting next to her. So it's kind of neat how all this well, network this is. Is, is this the big tennis tournament weekend out there? Yeah. Or, yeah. yeah. So okay. I leave Sunday for that. Oh, my word. And that's I'll, awesome. I've gone to those. And, and you know, it's a lot of fun. And basically, I... For in town, I have sat on the board for the Friends of the Hoppy and Seniors. I'm involved with the Friends of the 300 Celebration with Ann Click. I've been involved in just about anything from supporting the HPTA to stuff, but um, yeah. um, the Lake Mass Products Association used to be on their board. I actually don't live in their neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I live, so I live down at Sandy Beach, and we've been there since we closed on the house the day after our honeymoon. Oh. <laughs> so uh, we, I have not gone far <laughs> and ever so moved. Awesome. But um, that's a little bit about me and what I do. Absolutely. Well, Darlene actually came up with the idea that we might be of interest as a, as a as a show, as a you know, conversation that folks may want to join in on or, or watch, and um, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you came up with this and how we you got us all involved in a week ago? <laughs> well, it was funny. I I keep watching this group on Facebook grow and grow, and it's growing. I mean, the marketing and the networking that I've seen happen on this, you know. Real Housewives of Hoffington, we all are, but it's, it's kind of a, a tongue-in-cheek name, it has been amazing, um, and the friendships that have grown, but to take something in just under two years from 10 to 12 people to 300 is pretty substantial. There's no advertising, it's just friend of friend of friend, and we have gotten together, um, you know, we'll put it out, hey, we're going to meet for dinner on such as it, who can come? We might get a dozen, we may get eight um, every couple months, and it's been the friendships I've built and stuff has been, that's what it is, but noticing how many of these women are so strong, leaders of their households, leaders of business, whether they own salons, they they're, realtors. What do they do a corporate, every, <laughs> realtors, everything that are in this, in this town that there's such resources. I'm like, we need to like actually share more about these women, share what they do in their lives um, and what's going on in our community and things that we're excited about. I mean, I know there's a whole lot of things going on with full day free kindergarten to anything, you know, mm -hmm. new school committee members, all that all happening that, you know, it's like find out what everyone thinks and that it's weird that now there's another woman coming up for candidate. Exactly, exactly. Anything that touches our world locally or, or broader, actually. So we thought we'd, you know, sort of kick off some conversations of just about anything. I mean, we're on Facebook, uh, you know, we check it periodically, you know, and, uh, and uh, so we've got some, some things here. Maybe we can well, see what's you know, on we, the page We, we wanted to see, like, you know, if people had any ideas. I know that, you know, Kathy Dragon um, typed it, see if we can get sidewalks. And so, like, <laughs> she wants sidewalks, on one, so I don't know if anyone's listening, you know, at Town Hall, Norm, if you're listening. We need, we need more sidewalks, but, um, you know. I agree, Kathy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Well, if money's no object, yeah, well, oh, yeah, by let's, the way, let's, let's dream. Let's, yeah, let's do blue sky thinking. Yeah, indeed. Um, I want to see all the power lines put underground. Right. And I know it costs a lot of money to do in the beginning, <laughs> but the long-term payback, it's its so much cheaper with everything underground. I know new developments have to. Absolutely. But let's bury all the power lines. So, Wouldn't you that know, be fun? We've got, and then, well, Kathy um, Boudet put out yes. a question about the restaurants, restaurants. And, right. I, and what we want to see and 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 there was a lot of good feedback Absolutely. on well her question was really why don't restaurants stay in Hopkinton right or what you know what are what the challenges what will it take to get a good restaurant to be here and thrive as much as we all eat and out we have some good restaurants <laughs> we do that right. are we do. thriving mm -hmm. but then we've seen so many turnover, some turnover and why mm -hmm. but you know and that's a hard question but it was really fun to see everybody's opinions exactly which ones they liked and why and what they, and what they wanted yeah exactly. and, you know and it was all walking of life. It was right. people who have just moved here. There were people who have been here forever. Ever. Mm -hmm. And then there were, you know, in, in between. In between, but in between, you know, you would see, you know, their comparison of the restaurants that have been here established for a long time or things that where they actually cross town lines and go and what they like, what they don't like. I mean, we have no control of restaurants coming in. We do want a couple more, and um, from what we're hearing, we'd like something like O'Toole's back. But, um, <laughs> I don't know if there's anyone out there that wants to, you know, the marathon is open and vacant. Um, <laughs> You're neck of the wood. Uh, yeah. Oh. But, you know, I, I, you know, one of the things that stood out to me in one of the comments I actually made on it is that the restaurants that have actually 
had a long stability here in town. The, the Carbonis, the the Golden Spoons, well, uh, they, they all own their own property. Dynasty, None of them are yeah. tenants. Well, 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 Dynasty doesn't own its own property. Yeah, so it's the ones 20 that years, do. You know, that, you know, and they're, they're all family owned. None of them are chains. Right. And that they've had some, you know, I mean, Cornell's, even under new ownership, is doing well. Mm -hmm. Right. I haven't been in there in a long time. Yeah. Cornell's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to visit. You know, they're all fun. Mm -hmm. And it's all, Absolutely. all I love. Well, I know, love, well, we love keeping it local. And that's the one thing that the page has been. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I think very can... supportive of is supporting local businesses, letting people know what's going on locally, right, to right. engage locally. Um, Absolutely. Well, I think what was funny is like when we walked in here and stuff, and I said, I realized, oh, I have um, you know Trish Kozab's earrings on from IDAS. <laughs> You're like, oh yeah, Noel Howie put together my outfit a while ago, and I'm like, <laughs> and and we are being sponsored. We we, we should mention. Say, yeah, we actually have sponsorship from a local business. Love mm -hmm. these guys. Yeah, Dale mm. from um, the Red Barn uh, Cafe Roasters at Angels. Um, she owns the rights to the cafe for Red Barn and that's why we're well, a coffee and break. they're very right. local. They actually... They have, do everything out of Upton. And, and, and I can't remember, but I think they live in Hopkinton or lived in Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. yeah. When they first got started, and I apologize, I met them years ago and I can't remember their names, but they were just local and they had this idea and they were just getting started. And you mean I'm, Red Barn? Yes. Wow. Right. And yeah. I love where they've gone. They're now in Boston and yeah, it's the best. I thought they were larger actually. Let me ask a question. You mentioned uh, Angels. Are they associated at all with Evergreen, you know, across no, the, the road? No, the Angels has been owned by a, a local family for years, the Doherty's. Okay. okay. And um, very much, um, they, they have the franchise rights to R Dale that mm -hmm. uh, um, has the franchise rights to D Red Barn at um, Angels and um, Doherty's has been another family that really has given back to the community a lot. Red Barn gives back tremendously, and um, you know now there's a cafe in Coelho's for Red Barn and stuff like that too. Yeah. It's like they're yeah. all over the place. Um, so we know we can get coffee, pizza, a dry cleaners in town too. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. That's also been like a buzz on like. Oh this my thing. gosh, how many dry cleaners? I mean, good. They're great. They're all. But do we still have like two within a mile of each other? Oh, we have three. We have three. Yeah. yeah. And I haven't been to a dry cleaners personally in years. I mean, <laughs> it's not like I dry clean that much stuff. I, well, Hellers, you know. don't be listening to that. Right. I have a joy. Hellers, George, you have our pants. <laughs> <laughs> now Hellers is great, and so is the other one. They're all good. I just. I, I think two of the things that we. We've done though too on this page is also when there's been like you know drives for project just because we've been out there posting about that yeah. way things that need help in the community I know that you know one of our friends in the community posted about a friend of hers who actually lives in Chelsea but she lives in the community that had a fire and that you know they needed right. they needed you know clothing for a mother and a daughter mm. and how the what, response was instant it, it, it was instant and by the time I went and dropped off at our house the entire room was full mm. and to see like this is this group of women that saw okay there's a need and we want to run and help. Well, right. and what was really wonderful was she said, what they can't use will go to charity. Yeah. Right. It yeah. was, and you're just sitting like, yes, you Indeed. know, that, that's, it, it's a great group. Really I think is. there's been a lot of positive interaction. Mostly um, positive, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, uh, Which very, is unusual on Facebook. Sometimes you can get into, yeah, yeah. yeah but, but I think, I think we that. set the tone, though, yeah. And, yeah. And, and sometimes people say, well, may I do this? And it's like, mm -hmm. it's about promoting, yeah. um, good being will positive. and uh, good stuff. Good will. Like that. <laughs> yes, good will. Yeah. And we have fun. Yeah. We have fun. Yeah. yeah, and so I mean, it, and like Patricia said, it's still an open group, and women that you know, might maybe there's 17 of you actually watching if you want to get on it. <laughs> it's the Real Housewives of Hockey right. on Facebook, right. but it has been a lot of fun, and I think that the networking and the friendship and the connections. I mean, the woman that I brought out to the <gasps> event in Worcester is the sweetest thing. She not only lived in Hoffington less than a year, and then. I knew who she was a little bit, but she, she's like, oh, should we ride together? I said, yeah, because You're, we, you we, live next door to each other. We live four right. houses apart. And she's like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like that. And then since then, she's actually connected with another one of the neighbors and stuff like that. And they're starting to become friends and stuff like that. So it's been very cool. Well, it, it is. What I like about it is now that my children are no longer in the schools, mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily have this, the ability to connect the way it, the school is just a natural way for us making. to connect mm -hmm. and and so this has facilitated that connection kept us kind of close allowed us to share I know more about what's going on in town because of things happening that it are shared and and uh, positively influenced them and when tragedy struck being able to come together as a community um, 
in a positive yeah. way, and, and <clears throat> it's it's kept me connected. Um, and I think that's the great tool. As as anybody moving into town, if they're moving into town and don't have children, it's a great way to get to know your community, get to know your neighbors, um, and. And it's been interesting how social media uh. has brought us closer together. Sometimes I think everybody worries about us texting and, and tweeting right. and distancing. And I found this has been a, a great way to connect. And we've then facilitated the face-to-face, -face, right, you know, right, right. Uh, which has been pretty well, I, incredible. I find I use social media, and then I, I like to be in person. Mm. You know, I'm not doing much phone anymore. I mean, when you think about it, it's just like, and then let's get together and boom and then there's almost like you don't have to there's no awkwardness you know each other well right. from all of the interaction that you've either had or or perceived just right. seeing a person on a page right. no, so I, yeah. I, I, I agree with you and, and it's funny how we have um, we don't speak on the phone as much but then we use that to facilitate getting together in person. Right. And so that's the piece that I enjoy is it hasn't eroded no. the face to face time. In Not fact at all. I think it's promoted. I think yeah, it's I strengthened think it the yeah. Absolutely. Um, I mean and I yeah. think at first I was kinda hesitant in texting and everything like that. I looked I was like well, well can I just pick up the phone and talk to yeah. you? This is like typing again. Yeah. Right. I, 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 I took typing in seventh grade or something. Um, <laughs> and then F space. <laughs> well, I, I, I've had to learn how to uh, you know, type with my finger, which is a you whole know, new uh, You know, and the acronyms and all that. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden, you oh, know, I had to look up one acronym the other day. <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, okay. What, what was it? Oh, now you're going to ask me. Um, I think it was F O F O. And now I can't remember. I don't know what that means. It, it was something <laughs> like. Uh, like it's not a bad word. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was like fear of being left out or something. Oh, fear of okay. uh, you know whatever. Oh, it, yeah. Like uh, I'm gonna. It was somebody retweeting the Ellen DeGeneres. Um, right. Uh, selfie, selfie. Yeah. and and they did F O F O, and I think that's what it was. Oh God, I hope yeah. I'm not wrong. Please don't. <laughs> hold me to we this. even did a selfie here right before we started. Yeah, yeah. We'll have and to look and, it up. and um and I had to look it up. It was like oh, okay, now I know what's going on. That's funny. <laughs> did, um, Oh God, I can't remember now. I'm the, not texting. Uh, I'm seeing, looking to see. Oh yeah, find oh, a picture. <laughs> that picture. Oh, she's trying to take another picture of herself no, right now. No, the one, she's so. looking at her picture. No, does anybody <laughs> want to see our selfie? Yeah. I thought we could yeah. share. I don't know if um they. That's a good one, actually. Courtney, are you able to zoom in on that? Or <laughs> I don't know the angle. Oh, they get it. So you what you're gonna say? Yeah, keep oh, going. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I, I, oh, I thought like you know as we. I mean, this is gonna be kind of a pinnacle kind of marathon year coming up for us too and I was yes. thinking about things like how do you have you guys always gone to the marathons that you've been here where have you watched it from uh, things like that are I've you going to go to the runners that's yeah. awesome I, I want to do that this year well, I need to get in touch with someone because we have fortunate sure. the runners were um, personally affiliated with me so mm -hmm. uh, a dear friend from Chicago was running it this was a couple years ago when we had that incredible heat so about right. two years ago um, uh, and, and then, um, and then uh, a classmate of my daughter's who lives out of town was running it. So they, at the same time, stayed in the house, and so it was kind of great. But you know, we should put it out the there group. that you know this might be a forum for if the marathon planners or whatever you know need Absolutely. extra lodging. Because to your point, this is going to be a bigger right. year. You well, know, you know, let us know and we'll give it up on the page, page. Well, and you'll fill up. I mean, there'll be there'll be accommodations yeah. everywhere. Well, and, sure. and, but you ask, do we view it? So over the years, I've take, gone to the state park and taken in the bus mm -hmm. in with oh, family yeah. and friends. Um, we've walked. Mm -hmm. We've gotten up bright and early, <laughs> particularly when the start change time was later. You could drive in I and park. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's interesting how the marathon has changed over the years, too. Mm -hmm. It used to be you didn't have a lot of vendors on the common, um, and now the weekend has evolved. Things start yeah. Friday, Saturday, we, Sunday was, to the marathon. Absolutely, it's just so much fun. It I love was it. Very much a family tradition at our house. I mean, since we moved here, that was you know getting up early. Same thing, getting on the bus or walking there. I remember we always went the weekend before, um, but we see you know it's so exciting to see the newscasters. Yep, yep, um, yep. You know all and all the Around activity town. in town. And I do remember there were vendors though. I a few, know, but now yeah. it's full. Well, it's become yeah. like a festival. Yeah. yeah, it is like a festival. And I think that's kind of, I think I screwed, that's where I picked up the watch last year. It was like <laughs> some of the people um, selling 
watches and t-shirts and things like that out there. I think, you know, the kids look forward to it so much and it becomes part of it. You know, and it's always like the kickoff is, you know, April vacation. Right. And then you think about like, okay, do you want to go on vacation and go away someplace? Do you want to go visit family somewhere else? And it's like, well, you bring, uh, we'll always bring up, well, do you want to miss the marathon? Right. You gotta see the marathon. And, and, that, and that's been kind of like a thing. <laughs> My and, kids in college have brought friends home yes. to see yes. the marathon. Exactly. You know, even if they haven't had a break for that weekend. Mm -hmm. And they love telling it's people. Special. And even I, you know, I, I didn't grow up here. I lived 22 years in California. You know, mm -hmm. grew up in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Dutch. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, <laughs> I, when I tell people where I'm from, mm -hmm. I was like, Start of the Boston Marathon, That's what Hockington, you yeah. and, and so yeah. proud of it. So Absolutely. It. So. Well, it was funny, you know, I, I said what I do for work and stuff, and, you know, one of the most inspiration things is probably the Hoyts going through the marathon every oh, year. Yes. And a few years ago, I had um, Rick and Dick Hoyt at one of our matches. They were doing a book signing and everything, and uh, one of the players from another team, uh, Martina Hingis, she was a past number yep, one yep, in the world, yep. <laughs> and, you know, she was doing some VIP stuff before the matches, and she saw the distance, and she goes, are those the people from the Boston Marathon? And I said, yeah. She goes, can I go meet them? <laughs> and she asked to have her picture taken with them, wow. and, and, it was the, and, she, and she pulled out of her own wallet, and she bought their book. Awesome. And I thought that was the coolest thing. It's like, you know, th what we host here has pretty, pretty worldwide significance. I mean, what happened last year is... Tragic. Tragic, but the fact that like everywhere in the world people know us from that and it's pretty cool. Absolutely. Well, we may need to stop on that note. Yeah. Uh, there's so much to talk about. We hope we'll have more conversations. Yes. Looking forward to them. We want to thank, you know, Jim and Courtney here at Thanks, HCAM thank you and guys. for having us and yeah. um, again Red Barn for coffee. Absolutely. Thank you all. This has been fun and thank you all for joining and watching and we hope that you will uh, watch us again. Patricia. Darlene. Connie. See you soon. Bye. Bye. I'm Dr. Dennis Dimitri. One of the most important medical decisions a person can make is choosing a primary care doctor, one who provides your overall care and coordinates care for serious or complex conditions. You should consider many factors when selecting a new physician, but there are three that I think should be at the top of the list. First, make sure you feel comfortable with your doctor, that you can develop the critical elements of trust and respect that make a physician-patient relationship work. Second, focus on communication. Does the doctor listen to your questions and concerns and respond with adequate answers? Third, decide what kind of relationship you want. Do you want the doctor to make decisions for you, or do you want to make a more active role with someone who will engage in shared decision making? A good relationship with a physician can last a lifetime and offer confidence in the quality of your care. For more information, visit the Massachusetts Medical Society at massmed.org. Hi, I'm Christine Maselli. Join me for the next episode of Absolutely Yoga, only on HCAM-TV.